we are late in the calendar year. That's a good time to be south, and that's where we are. The weather just perfect right now here tonight at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, Florida. Just a short time ago, the Buccaneers emerging from their tunnel to the roar of this frenzied crowd here in the Sunshine State. And we're in the big ship, and fittingly, everyone here ready to do battle as Tampa Bay gets ready to match up with Matt Ryan and the Atlanta Falcons. Now Ryan on first down. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. And partner to me, that one was all about timing. If he's there too early, it's going to be a pass interference call. If he's too late, it's a completed pass. He was Johnny on the spot on that one. That incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. To throw again. Ryan, short throw underneath to Hurst. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. So that'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Let's just break this down and make it pretty simple. Key to the drag route, letting the play develop, finding the hole in the defense, and giving your athlete, yes, athlete, a chance to make something happen once he has the ball in his hands. Now the first carry here for Todd Gurley. And he will not get there as they stop him short right around the 34-yard line. Just a yard on the run there, and that's going to bring us to a fourth down. Well, they picked up a portion of it, but not all that they needed. Now that leads to a decision on fourth and one. Let's see what they decide to do. On fourth down, the Falcons trot out the rookie punter from Syracuse, Sterling Hoffrichter. Back deep, Jadon Mickens. And here's a fair catch taken at about the 24-yard line. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. The Bucs ready to take over once again. Brady going to bring the Bucs up with a first and 10 at their own 24. Out of the gun, he'll throw. They'll tussle for it, and this is going to be caught. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. Here's Ronald Jones, first carry for the USC man. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. Same exact result as last play, a pickup of 11. With no slow start here, a couple nice chunk plays back to back. I love the momentum that they're showing here early because they did it both ways, right? Threw the ball on first down for a nice chunk of yardage. Came right back and ran the ball. Looks like they've got the defense set back on their heels. Let's see if they can keep this moving. And they'll keep on the ground with Jones. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. So back-to-back -back big runs, picking apart this defense on the opening drive. I thought this was a passing lead. I thought this was the era we were in where the ball was always in the air, right? They didn't get the memo. And they didn't get the memo, and I know this to be true. Offensive linemen still, to this day, they want to run the football. They want to fire out and hit people across the line of scrimmage and they're clearing space. Incomplete. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle, going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. Looking back to the air on second down. It's Brady. Over the middle here to Brown. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. A gain of eight. Brings up third and two. Second down pass play got him eight yards. Now they've got a third and a couple remaining. 
They'll try and run for it with Jones. And he's got some space here. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop it. That burst good for 20 and a first down. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script. You go through your play calling. You go through all the stuff and establish things. And it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. And he's going to be dropped back at the 15-yard line. Grady Jarrett making his presence felt. He gets the sack. It's interesting, partner, that most defenses try and guard the 35-yard line actively because they think the way kickers are nowadays, about a 52-yard field goal, they're kind of giving up points. But you get even deeper into territory, you get into the red zone, they're going to guard it even more, which means more pressure, more blitzing. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. Four yards on the pickup there, and now they're left with a third and eight. I think that run gives us evidence that the defense is getting a little bit tired out there. They've been out in the field for a long time, and that last run, they just cut right through them. Eighth play of the drive, fourth coming, and they need eight yards on third down. Shotgun now for Brady. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Picked off by the rookie, A.J. Terrell. Uh, no doubt a very disappointing end to what was a pretty strong opening drop. They had three points in their back pocket. It was there for them. If you don't like what you see, just throw it away. Make sure you get those points on the board. Don't get too greedy. He forced it there. You saw the end result. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. From the 26, they'll line up on second and four. Out of the gun, it's Ryan. To the right side and complete to Hurst. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. 23 yards the pick up there. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius. Understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball. And puts it right out there for the nice pickup. From midfield now, here's Ryan. A very quick pass to Ridley. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. Ryan going to get this complete to Hurst. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. Three yards the game there, second down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. 15 yards on the play, first down. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. Throwing now, Ryan on first down. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. Three yards the game there, second down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed-out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route-running savvy. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Again, Ryan. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked up by Sean Murphy Bunting. The 40. Past the 20. And it's a pick six. He brings it back to the house for a Buccaneer TD. Well, it certainly looked to me like he tapped into the quarterback's thought process there. And what I'm hearing more and more when I go around the league, defenders sitting in on quarterback meetings trying to learn more about how they think so they can be in the right position to be in the right spot as he was there to pick that one off and take it all the way back for a touchdown. 
And that one gives the Bucks a 7 to nothing lead. The score, Buccaneers 7, Falcons nothing. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And following the pick six, and they have decent field position in throwing that pick six. We'll see how they attack this drive. And I think all you say to your guy is, listen, let's just take care of the football a little bit better. Make some better decisions on this drive, and they'll probably help him a little bit with maybe some really high percentage throws early to let him get settled back yeah, in. But they told him, and they told us, they've got confidence. That, that's not a problem. Yeah, not a problem at all. They just want to make sure they get things settled down a little bit for their offense and give their defense a little bit of a chance to rest. It's a pickup of six. All right, Brandon, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. From the 26, they'll line up on second and four. From the gun, it's Ryan. He completes it to Julio Jones. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. And that's the connection Ryan to Jones that this defense obviously has to key in on. Certainly feels like they got the party started with that one, doesn't it? And when those two get in sync, it just scares the heck out of defenses because he can hit Julio Jones in a short zone, and he can take it the whole way. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. Give him back-to-back -back catches now. That one for 16 and another first down. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. On first down, it's Gurley. And he's able to get across midfield and down into Buccaneer territory. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Well, in every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown, so a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later, and let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Now on second down, this is Gurley. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. Jason Pierre. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. From the gun on third down, Ryan. And he's going to have the hook up to Gage. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. Well, we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost art in the NFL game. But it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, the game the underneath stuff, you got to go up and make the tackle right away. And look at this, it's a fake. And he will not even make it back to the line of scrimmage. A little trickeration there, but it doesn't fool him. And the Buccaneers defense holds, and they get the football back. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their own 46. 
Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. Quickly to Gronkowski. That's caught. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. Seven yards to pick up there. But the Brady Gronk connection, certainly something to watch here with the Bucs in 2020. Of Tom Brady's 541 touchdown passes coming into 2020, Gronk's 78 were the most of any receiver. To throw again on second down. Brady, this into the hands of his running back, Ronald Jones. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. That one, a first down pickup of eight. And that's a good catch and a good pickup for a first down for Ronald Jones. And he's got to be thinking to himself, can I be the James White of Tampa Bay? Remember, White played such a big role for Tom Brady in New England. Can Ronald Jones now be that guy? Only 30 catches a year ago, but he could easily double that number with Tom Brady throwing him the football out of the backfield. And a really good show of force there as he gets through for four tough yards. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Back to the ground, this time with Jones. And pretty good running as he'll be close to a first down at the Falcons 31. Call it a gain of five there on the run, but they'll remain a yard or two short here with third down coming up. And two. Brady gives this one off to Jones. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And that'll bring up fourth down. On fourth down, Ryan Suckup now for the Buccaneer field goal. A 51-yard attempt. They're not going to get it. They try to move the chains with a surprise, but it's a turnover on down. It would have been a long field goal. The fake doesn't work out. And the Falcons' defense stands tall. They'll get the football back. Ryan will bring the Falcons up now, first and 10 at the 34. And from the shotgun, he'll throw. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there to get him down. Looking to throw again on second down. Ryan. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. He did an okay job of absorbing the hit, just couldn't secure the football through the catch. And he was right there on the spot and forced the incompletion. That's something defenders work on all the time. If you're there, make the contact, but continue to work your way through the receiver so they can't possess the football and turn it into a catch. From the gun on third down, Ryan. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. Pass. That'll put him at an even 50 receiving yards now in this first half. And it's a first down. You don't always expect tight ends to be big in terms of run after the catch, but after that play, he joins a growing band of players that's putting that stereotype right on its ear. They'll throw on first down with Ryan. Going to flare this one out to Gurley in the flat. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. Complete to Todd Gurley. It's a pickup of six. Brings up second and four at the 43-yard line. Line of scrimmage, the 43 on second and four. They go play action now. Ryan. And Jones has it over the middle. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks 29-yard line. Ryan to Jones, the Falcon connection there for a first. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. 
And he'll be out of bounds as he gets this down about the 21 or 22. Give him seven on the play, and it'll bring up a second down. A of seven. Brings up second and three. Brian will throw again. Open his pal. That's complete. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. 12 yards there and a first down. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. He's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. From the shotgun, Ryan, and it's caught. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. They'll try and pick up the first with Gurley. Yeah, I don't think Gurley got there. Looks like the defense held him back. He needed two, he got one, and that's going to leave him with fourth down of the yard. Line of scrimmage, the two. They can still get a first down if they just get a yard out of this on fourth and very short. Here we go, it's Gurley. And he gets in. Touchdown, Atlanta. Taking it in from two yards out. And the Falcons are an extra point away from tying the football game. He had the option to hand that football off. I think it's safe to say that he made the right decision. That was a heck of a run. It certainly was. And when you mentioned the option, most people think the quarterback's not going to keep the ball. You know, in the NFL, that's usually not the recipe for being around too long. So when you do keep it, it often surprises the heck out of a defense. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. At their own 22-yard line. Brady and the Bucks now with a first and 10 at their own 22. From the gun, he'll set up to throw. That's complete to his receiver, Godwin. And he got blown up on that play. Back at the 20. That one unable to develop, never got going. A loss of a couple, and it's second down.
After the penalty, it's Fournette. If they didn't have that penalty a moment ago, it'd be a first down. Still a nice 13-yard pickup. I was pretty surprised there when they lined up to run it on second and long, but it worked out for them. It certainly did, and that requires some confidence, some fortitude, and a little bit of hope, doesn't it? You hope you catch the defense just right and break off a big run to help yourself out on the next down. From the gun on third down, Brady. And they will touch him down, but not before he gets the first. Brady finding Godwin there for a Buccaneer first. Throughout his career, Tom Brady has made a living with a quick pass, hasn't he? How about that one? A little slant inside, and I think his arms got stronger throughout his career, too. Yeah. You can just see one of many examples of why he's made more trips to the Super Bowl than any other quarterback. Footwork, intelligence, competitiveness. That's Tom Brady in a nutshell. Now a first down carry by Jones. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through, but that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. Now a draw play, this is Jones. And this is gonna be back-to-back -back tackles for a loss here, as the Falcons' defense yet again drops him behind the line. Third down, now even tougher. Third and 13 after that loss of a yard. From the gun, it's Brady. Looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. And he'll go down to the ground at the 39, and obviously that's well short of the first. When you decide to run a hitch route, it really helps to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. So on now is the Clemson man, Bradley Pinion, to punt this one away. Taken in at the 22. They'll score that a 36-yard punt, and the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. The Falcons offense set to go. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown, and now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. Now Ryan on first down, and he will find Ridley. That's complete. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. A good pickup there, eight yards on the first down completion. At the 37-yard line. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Here's Gurley. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. And there's a run there by Todd Gurley, and we all know he's looking to rebound from the least productive season of his career. And I think Atlanta presents him a great opportunity to do just that. They'll use him really well running it as well as catching it out of the backfield. On first and ten, it's Ryan. Completes his short throw to Stocker. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 12 yards is the pickup. Good for a first down for the Falcons. First down, Falcons. On first down, Ryan. Caught on the right side by Jones. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 12 yards on back-to-back -back plays there, and that's another first down. First down. To throw is Ryan. And he'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. Well, we can talk about it like it's just a basic route, but how about the timing on this one? Lined up on the right, runs a deep in route, and how about the throw? Right on the money. 
Bam! Puts it right in there and on his hands. Nice completion. Really good pickup. He'll drop this underneath to Gurley. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. Throwing again, Ryan. That's complete right around the eight. That catch good for only a couple. Out of bounds down at the eight yard line. A gain of two brings up second and eight. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. To throw again is Ryan. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. Eight yards to go. Eighth play of the drive, forthcoming, and they need eight yards on third down. Out of the gun, it's Ryan. The Bucks defense stiffens and pushes this to fourth down. Thrown away and incomplete. It's fourth down. And we'll see Young Way Koo now for the Falcons. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. And this one is right through. And the Falcons are out to a 3-0 advantage. That drive took him inside the 10. Good job defensively to hold him to three. Yeah, I like how you did that. Give a little tip of the cap to the stop troops there because they didn't give up a touchdown in that situation, right? Made them kick the field goal. And yeah, points went against them, but that feels a whole lot better running off the field. team on the field now as they will send this one away. Fielded in the end zone. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. Down three under a minute to go. How aggressive are you going to be in this spot? Not as aggressive as I probably would want to be. Only down three. I mean, it might as well be even going into the half. That's not a deficit that makes me want to push it and potentially make a mistake in this situation and cost myself even more points. Before getting into field goal range and tying it, that's tempting. Awfully enticing. You almost talked me into it. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Back now comes Tampa Bay. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk. This is a big decision here. The Bucks going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as it'll come with 36 ticks to go in half number one. First down, Brady. He gets it into the hands of Gronkowski, complete. They'll contain him to just four, second down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. The Bucks forced to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. 
Throwing again on second down. Brady, it's complete to Brown, right side. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 43. Give them 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. So we have reached halftime now with the visiting Falcons out on top. As we send you a stone's throw away across I-4 to Orlando, they're standing by as Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports halftime report. Coach. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Out come the Buccaneers. They'll have it first to start the third quarter. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys, they're tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take? to get back on track. Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. A good start to the drive here as that's caught out on the left side. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Fresh out of the locker room, they hit him with a gain of over 20. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense and reading your keys. You always hear about that and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? That sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. A nice run there by Jones on first down as he'll wind up getting about five, so second and five coming up. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. From midfield, here's Brady. And he'll get that to Fournette complete. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 39. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. We couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one-score game, first and 10 here. Working from the gun, it's Brady. That's complete to his running back, Evans. He's going to go out of bounds, but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. He was held without a catch in the first half, but he's got one here, and he also picks up a first down. First and 10 at the 22-yard line. And on this challenge, the refs have to take a peek and see whether or not the receiver was able to dot the eye with both feet. While making sure that he possesses the football all the way through the catch. Throwing on first down is Brady. And that going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. Throwing again. Brady. Left side here, that's complete to Godwin. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. He continues to deliver a first down here. He had four catches in the first half, and this one number five. Again, it's Brady. This is caught, Gronkowski. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Tom Brady to his old Patriot pal, Rob Gronkowski. And the Bucs are going to retake the lead. The tight end position has always been dangerous, especially in the red zone. Short field. 
but now even more so because these tight ends aren't necessarily the tight ends of old. They're the rocked up wide receivers who have a little bit more speed, way harder to cover than before. Extra point up and good by Sucka. And the lead is now 14 to 10. Powell on the return. And able to get this out to the 25. Here comes the Falcons offense. It's their first possession of the second half now. They trail offense. First time to touch the ball in quarter three. And we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned. Because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. We'll see what they have up their sleeve. William Golston in on the stop. It's interesting going into this game, there was so much talk from both sides about who would control the line of scrimmage. I think we've seen who has it in this one so far. Well, they bottled him up. He's barely averaging over three yards a carry right now. From the 27, Ryan. He's going to have the hook up to Gage. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. You can just kind of sense the momentum turning here. It's first and 10. From the gun, it's Ryan. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Atlanta. Operating from the gun, Ryan. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. It's been clear in this matchup which side has been the more physical one. It's been this defense. And here's another example on that last play. So a line of scrimmage, still the 39 on second and 10. To throw again. Ryan, and this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. A gain of eight yards, and it's third down. Second down pass play got him eight yards. Now they've got a third and a couple remaining. Gurley. And he gets the first down here as he's taken down at the 24. Able to get what they need to keep the drive going with a six-yard pickup on third down. But they're getting ready to go to work now in prime real estate after that last run. Found his spot and picked up nice yardage, didn't he? And now he's got him knocking on the door of the red zone. Throwing now, Ryan on first down. The left side completion to Jones. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. A gain of six there on first. At the 19-yard line. A six-yard pickup brings up second and four. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. From the shotgun, Ryan. And he's going to go down. He's sacked back in the 24. 
Devin White credit him with a sack, and it goes as a loss of six. Well, this has been a pretty sizable drive. They've had some success. Finally, the defensive coordinator found some success of his own. I think he just simply said enough of that. Okay, they've moved the ball well. We need to force the issue from our end, and that's exactly what he did. On third down, Ryan. The Bucks defense stiffens and pushes this to fourth down. I think he had to unload that one before he wanted to. He was right up in his grill. I think he was a dentist there without a license, don't you? <laughs> Just not enough time for the play to develop. Just lucky it wasn't a fumble, really. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. He connected on his first, this from 41. And his kick here is good. And the lead is down to one now at 14-13. So in the end, they had the ball for 10 plays, but the drive gets them three, not six. Is it okay if I give credit to both sides on this one? Absolutely. All right, let's start defensively. They hung in there. 10-play drive, but they stiffened when they got close to the goal line, made them kick a field goal for the offense. 10-play drive. They might be a little disappointed they got a field goal, but they moved the ball down the field with dispatch and came away with points. So we're back to a one-point game now as the kickoff comes. Taken about seven yards deep. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. And they'll be looking to build off of a nice drive last time, a drive that really relied on the quarterback. Making good decisions, distributing the ball well, distributing it accurately, keep, keeping it away from danger. A really nicely run drive. But now the defense, what adjustments do they need to make in the passing game? Pass rush, pass rush, pass rush. Whether it's the guys up front, or maybe you bring additional guys, but you've got to disrupt the timing of them throwing the football. We'll see if they can disrupt it here. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it, and be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. Looking downfield for Godwin. And that will be incomplete. Try to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Shotgun now for Brady. He's got Evans. And he is going to have a box first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That good for 19 yards as they pick up the conversion on third. But Mike Evans sees man coverage. I don't think he's the only guy who gets excited. I guarantee the guy throwing the ball does because guess what? He's got a lot of options about where to place it because of Mike Evans' size and frame. On first down, Jones breaks the tackle. He's got room to run. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line. Tackled there. Another nice game. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower his center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10, right at the 40. From the gun, it's Brady. And he was hit as he threw it there, and it forces it incomplete. When defenses get to the quarterback that quickly, a lot of times it's called a jailbreak. It wasn't quite that fast, but fast enough that he had no time to look downfield and set himself to throw the ball. And as he tried to do that, he was hit, and it forced an incompletion. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. On the delay, Jones. And he's going to get this inside the 30. 11 yards there, first down. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? After the run by Jones, here's first and 10. Come 
from the gun. Brady. And a catch right side by Evans. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. Okay, so now the question, how did he get that wide open? Well, we both know that he shouldn't because from the time they handed out scouting reports before this game, he was circled, starred, everything. Find him, cover him. But sometimes you can scheme a guy open. You put the receivers in a bunch. Maybe you move some motion. Maybe you put them on the backside of a formation, and all of a sudden you've got a better matchup. Every now and then, the offensive guys, they figure a way to get him open, even with everyone keeping eyes on him. And that's certainly a guy they want to keep trying to scheme open. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is? to not play too much zone. Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Facing a second and three. Ball on the 10. Fournette running out of the gun. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Five men in the secondary now for the Falcons on third down. They'll run it again with Fournette. And he will have the first down before yeah, he's brought yeah, down at the three. Tampa Six yards on the pickup, and it leaves him with a first and goal. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive, because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense getting a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. They'll try and run it in with Jones. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Well, it's apparent the defense understands the situation. They have to keep them out of the end zone here. That's a great start by them. A loss on that play. Can they force them into a field goal attempt and still give their offense an opportunity? Second down and goal. Brady, this is caught. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. That time, the completion goes for four yards, and we're set up with a third and goal. That's the end of the third quarter. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. About a half yard from the end zone, third and goal. They'll try to punch it in with Fournette. And he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Taking it in from a yard out. And the Bucs are going to add on to their lead. Well, they decided to run it in and got it done on third and goal. A lot of times, that's a passing play. And the kicker, this has to come out for the PAT. He can breathe a sigh of relief as well, right? Although, I don't know if he's really breathing a sigh of relief. I think he likes to put three points on his ledger. And he'll bang that one through. Makes the score. Buccaneers 21. Falcons 13. Away. 
Takes this about five yards deep. And it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. Atlanta prepped and ready for its next possession. Still plenty of time here in the fourth quarter. Just a one possession game down eight. They'll be looking for the touchdown and two point conversion. A field goal here on this drive does very little at this stage. Ryan and the Falcons now come up first and 10 at their 25 yard line. From the gun, he'll set up to throw. And he gets this one to Ridley complete. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. First play of the drive, a success, 19 yards. First play of the drive in their hip pocket. Of course, the focus here has to be the touchdown of the two-point conversion. Field goals aren't going to help you. Yeah, but how about that first play of the drive? Just to get them started, nice gain, got some positive momentum going. They're on their way, and they don't have to rush. The throw over the middle, taken in. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Operating from the gun, Ryan. Looking left side, he's got it complete. And he's taken down inside the 30. Same result as last play, 14 yards and another first down. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. This pass into the hands of the running back, Todd Gurley. A good rally to the football keeps him to only a yard, and it's second down. He's forced out of bounds behind the line of scrimmage. Again, Ryan. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. The throws like that, especially where we sit in the fourth quarter, he's got to be careful. Yeah, and you know one of my faults is that I often view this game through a defensive back's eyes. And in this situation, your team's losing. It's late. Tighter coverage. Take a chance and go and try and step in front of one of those and make a big play. So if you're the quarterback, that should be in your head. This is their time to take a gamble. And that will be incomplete. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This from 44 yards out, left hash. And his kick is good. And that'll get the lead down to five. So an interesting call there to take the three. I mean, I guess they're thinking that their hands were tied, but, you know, fourth quarter, that field goal might not help them that much in the end. Yeah, eventually they're going to need the touchdown. The thinking must have been they didn't feel confident about picking it up there, hoping maybe on defense they can get better field position, get a turnover, get a better play, and then they'll have a chance to attack the end zone. from the six and up to about the 26 yard line just across the 25 and Tampa Bay trots out there now they have the lead obviously late in the game I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake a field goal does the opposition no good everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion and that helps you immeasurably but the bottom line is do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. They'll start out on the ground with Jones. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. He's 
And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. That's going to set him back five yards. On second down, here's Brady. Over the middle here to Brown. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Antonio Brown. A gain of five brings up third and six. The Bucks on third down. They've had good success. Five for eight to this point. This will be third and six. From the gun, Brady. He gets it to Brown, complete. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. It's a gain of 11, and the Bucs have a first down. Couldn't just sit on it here, could they? Had to throw the ball third down, got the big completion in the pickup. Fresh set of downs now. They've got to feel great. And defensively a backbreaker. Brady now on first down. This will be caught once again by Brown. Brady's pass. A gain of six there on first. It's a pickup of six. Brings up second and four at the 47-yard line. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. Now Jones. And he'll get three up to midfield. Jones, the ball carrier. That's some good tackling there to keep him short of that yellow line. Yeah, defensively, all I'm thinking is that on that play, get me to third down. Get me into a position where I can make one more play and get my defense off the field. The Bucks on third down. Six conversions and nine tries. They've done a great job of picking these up. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. Give him seven yards on the play as they do pick up the third down conversion. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. Looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Brings up second and two at the 36-yard line. More muscle up front for this second and two. They've got three tight ends out there. This is Jones. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Starting to feel a little to me like the air is coming out of the balloon, so to speak, defensively. They're taking their will from them right now. That's what they're doing. Whatever they want to call, it's working. They're handling things up front. And it's not just the offensive line. It's everyone. You're seeing the guys on the perimeter blocking downfield and making sure that they're secure. So, yeah, you're exactly right. The air is out of the balloon. And right now, they're almost lifeless. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. It's a gain of seven. That time, they hit him out of the slot on the drag. And that route takes some fortitude from the guy running it because he knows he's going through the briar patch, as I like to call it, right? He's trying to work his way through all that traffic, and people want to put a little contact on it. Really well done. Brady's pass there, complete to Gronkowski. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle is made at the Falcons 16. 11 more yards there, and this methodical drive continues. Like so many tight ends nowadays, they have no problem at all putting him in the slot and letting him go to work, and that's a nice pitch and catch right there for a first down. 
So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Into the red zone, it's Brady. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Brown. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Second and two at the eight-yard line. Jones. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. A five-yard gain there makes it first and goal. It carries like that. That's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Nothing doing there as the 13th play of the drive proves to be unlucky. Charles, thinking back to what you said in the first quarter, that part of the magic elixir for a road victory for these underdogs was going to be winning the turnover battle. Well, they only have one right now. Look at the scoreboard. Yeah, not exactly playing to the form that I subscribed, right? When you talk about winning that turnover battle, that evens things out, especially... And he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. Touchdown run. And the Buccaneers here finding a way to stretch their lead. A strong, determined run there, Charles, to get in for six points. This is why it's such a team game, isn't it? And I know it sounds really generic and it sounds almost trite, but the blocks were made up front, offensive line, collective victory at the line of scrimmage and downfield. And how about the finish to the run all the way into the end zone? Extra point put through by Suckham, and it gives his guys a 12-point advantage. Taken in the end zone. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. And you figure after giving up that last touchdown, you know, they trail by two scores here in the fourth quarter. This drive becomes very critical. Ryan will bring the Falcons up now first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. From the shotgun, he'll throw. And he's got him. Got his man on the end round. Complete. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. At this stage, this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them. And if I'm the offensive play caller, I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield. I'm looking at some of my specials, something that can fool them and give you a big play now. With a sense of urgency. No doubt. And that is incomplete. Well, they certainly did a nice job there, picking him up out of the backfield and then running stride for stride with him. That's good coverage, and it led to an incompletion. And one yard to go. The Falcons on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. They're up against a third and one situation. Out of the gun, it's Ryan. And he comes back with one complete. And he is going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to convert on third and short yardage with a gain of four. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. On first down, Ryan. And Jones has it over the middle. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Short play like that in this situation, this late, that's a win for the defense. No doubt. I remember something Coach Madden used to talk about all the time. Sometimes you can't just take what the defense gives you. 
You have to take what you need. And in this case, the offense is taking what the defense is giving them, not what they need. Working with second and five now. Throwing again, Ryan. A slant to Jones. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. That one, a first down pickup of eight. First down. Nothing flashy there, the slant to the slot. Oh, and the frustration for the defensive guys, because it's a quick play. And you know it's going to be a bang-bang play in terms of the throw and the catch. And then he's able to absorb the contact and complete it. Ryan will throw again. And incomplete as he was knocked as he threw it. And it took the ball off course. The good signal callers would never go back in the huddle and play the blame game because they need those guys to protect him. But on that last one, his offensive line, they lost their leverage very quickly. And that's why they were able to get to him and hit him as he tried to throw the football and force an incompletion. Second and 10, it's Ryan again. And he's going to have the hook up to Gage. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. Five yards. Now it's third and five. And it's third down. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. To throw again is Ryan. He's going to let it fly, and that is incomplete. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone, eventually that becomes man on man, and you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of truth and make a play on the football. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. They'll try and throw for it with Ryan. And he's got a man, Calvin Ridley. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. They keep the game alive, at least for the moment, as it's a first down. One crisis averted, but they still need to move hastily. Now Ryan on first down. Looking for his running back, and he's got him. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. Complete. Two and passing yardage-wise, now up over 350 in this game. Pretty nice performance. Definitely that, which usually means you're putting a lot of pressure on guys trying to cover. If you're a defensive back and they put over 350 yards on you, you've had a long day. The key to everything, if you're doing it without throwing interceptions or turning the ball over. And this is caught now for a late touchdown. So hold everything here. This one's not over yet. Okay, game on. Don't go anywhere yet. You got a one-score game now. Probably going to rely on the onside kick coming up. Yeah, they have to. It's not a high percentage play, but it's better than not having a chance at all. And that's when you put your leapers and your flyers on one side, get that high hop, and hope that one of the guys can come up with it. And on the other side, you get that hands team ready. No doubt about it. Two able to connect on the extra point. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. Twenty-five seconds to go. A must recover if they're going to have any chance. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a camper on this one. The fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. 
I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% <laughs> of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Back now comes Tampa Bay. Victory formation now for the Buccaneers. Down to a knee they go. Falcons going to use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 22 ticks to go in the fourth. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. Brady will take a knee here, and that should just about do it. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about <laughs> doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? And the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. So time has run out on what will be a Tampa Bay victory. And they were buoyed, Charles, by a big second half that put this one on ice. So you get the sense that whatever was said at halftime obviously hit home. I think it's a little bit more than that, though. Obviously, there are words that are said, and hey, come on, guys, we have to play better. But sometimes it's just sharpening your execution, sharpening your focus, and maybe doing the things you practiced all week without major adjustments, just doing them better. And that got it done in this one. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaughton. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. The Bucks are winners here as we say so long from Tampa.